This show is clean. Yep. Pretty much. <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 698. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, California. Today, Madam Rutabaga, Valentino, Vice and Bentley. Plus, it's the finale of my Into an Interview with the beautiful Leanne Kelly, lead singer of the San Francisco band New Spell. And there, there was something that happened in Chicago. Mike's Daily Podcast. Podcast. That was rather terrifying if you're a tourist and into that story we'll find out about so we'll know. Mike's Daily Podcast. What that was coming up soon on yesterday's show. The disgruntled fiddle player said he was okay with Benita replacing Chelsea Handler and I Love Slayer. They were a great band and so was the group. Oh, Slade. Oh, that was an awesome band and a song they made In the early 80s. Run, run away. Mike's Daily Podcast. And in England, they got a Christmas song. So here it is. Merry Christmas. But this is too early to sing those songs. Mike's Daily Podcast. I just want to say that every Dr. Podcast. Who Christmas special. Yeah. After they rebooted it, always featured that Slade song. Because I guess it's a big British Christmas tune. And where they say Happy Christmas. But hey, it's not even, we're not even at the midway point of the year when you do the half. Do have you ever celebrated halfway to Christmas Day? I think they celebrate it in July, where technically it should be in June. But I have never done that. I've never hung around people that partied that much and that well. Speaking of partiers that party well, I went to the brick and mortar last night. I have never been to that. It's in San Francisco. You may have heard the El Terrible interview I did with Terry Ashkenaz. And he was telling me about how he was going to be playing at the brick and mortar. And he did. And I went to see him and he was great. And he had told me it was in San Francisco. For some reason, I thought I was in Berkeley. And I will never make that mistake again now. Because I know it's in San Francisco and exactly where it is. And I drove there. I was going to take Bart there. And I, like, missed my train by a minute. My... Mm, that's so frustrating, isn't it? I had gone by the time on my car clock. Because I'm like, oh, my car clock is right. I don't need to look at my iPhone. No. The iPhone time is always right. Say what you will about iPhones, but the time is always right on those things. My car clock was so off. I get over there and, and, and the train's already left. So I haven't gone through the turnstiles yet. Because as soon as you go through the turnstiles, you have to pay five bucks. Even if you turn right around and come back out. So I get in my car and I'm like, hell, I got a car. I got a full tank of gas. Uh, Chicago is 100 miles away and we're wearing sunglasses. Blues Brothers reference, albeit a bad one. And so I, I made it to San Francisco in like roughly 30 minutes and made it to the show uh, just as El Terrible had started their set and they sounded fantastic Terry is a wizard on the guitar he has that great sort of alternative sound when he's playing it just was awesome and then two other bands followed them one was a band called Radkey I think they're called and it is three African American rockers that kick utter ass and they I got to meet them after the show super nice guys kids they're kids they're like all t- the the uh, uh, two two of them are actually related they're, they're brothers and the drummer is 17 then they were followed by a band called Blood Red Shoes I think is what it, they were which is a s- sister and brother and they're from England and the, the brother plays the drums, the sister plays guitar, and that's it. And they create this wall of rock sound that is just an insane. They're, every song has a tempo uh, so fast that you're, you know, if you tried to simulate it on a Casio keyboard, it would explode. Just great music. And, and the people just couldn't uh, get enough. In fact, the, the neighbors were complaining, and they were like saying, you neighbors and they kept playing British rock British punk it was awesome 
So that was my experience. Oh, look who just walked in. Hello, Michael Masters. This is Madame Brute Bega. And when I invented rock and roll, I meant it to be played by shiblings. Really? Brothers and sisters and brothers and brothers? Yes, Michael Masu. I think that is the best form of the rock and roll. Ooh. Interesting. So you're saying keep it in the family? Yes, Michael Masu. And why didn't you take me to the brick and mortar? I wanted to rock out too. Ooh. Um, okay, next time I will. Brick and mortar is a really neat place. It's got a, it's not huge, but it does, it has this really high ceiling. Like it must have been a, I don't know, like a, where they repair cars or something. Really big sort of place inside. But yet not a uh, uh, huge. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, it's it's not it's it's tall, but not wide. I guess I'm saying that. And a nice stage and good sound. I stood around the soundboard because I'm old, and I thoroughly thought the sound was wondrous. And I had had a wonderful time. Thanks again to Terry Ashkenazabel Terrible. And look who else just walked in. Hello there, Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, we do not find ourselves in any way related to each other. But we know that we would make a really horrible rock band, D. Ah, that's good to know. Bison, did you ever want to be in a rock band? Yeah, Mike, I wanted to be the next Brian Adams. Do you know that? Uh, Brian, why? Because love cuts like a knife and it feels so right. Oh. All right. That's a good enough reason. You know, you guys kind of have a Chicago accent, New York, Brooklyn accent. I don't know exactly where you guys are. Where are you guys from? We don't know that. Do you know that? Yeah, I'd never ask that again, D. All right. Well, Chicago, something happened that, well, four men, four men, they're not four men. But there are men of the number of four in a group of four had a terrifying couple of moments when the glass floor they were standing on at 103 stories above Chicago in the Willis Tower observation deck appeared to start developing cracks. This according to Reuters. The men were standing in one of the tower's glass boxes that extend out about four feet. One meter from the observation floor. This happened last night. Oh, I hate those things. They got one of those in the Grand Canyon. Never going to walk on that. Uh, When a protective coating on the floor shattered. Well, the men were never in danger, according to the building spokesman. The Willis Tower, previously named the Sears Tower, is one of the tallest buildings in the United States and was once the tallest building in the world. The floor began to crack when Alejandro Garave, two of his cousins and his brother, stood up after sitting in a box to pose for pictures. He said in, on, on his Facebook, uh, Garave wrote, and he's from Stockton, California, it was one of the craziest feelings of my life. The coating protects the glass so that visitors have a clear view of 1,353 feet straight down to the ground. The boxes make up the ledge, which is a popular attraction. They probably charge so much to anything like that, like the stratosphere or, or whatever sphere it's called in Las Vegas. They charge you so much money to go to the top of that. At no time was the integrity of the ledge in doubt, said the spokesperson. Yeah, whatever. He says the coating of the boxes breaks occasionally. Okay, all the more reason to spend all that money and stand out there. You know, you get the same sensation in a plane. And in a plane, you're actually going somewhere. Maybe to visit family or whatnot. So I'll take that over the ledge anytime. What do you think? Are you a big fan of these sort of uh, tourist traps? Email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section, emails from email. 
Also email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. There's also uh, uh, the website, Mike's Daily Podcast.com, that has links to where to find us on iTunes. Subscribe to the show in iTunes so you'll get it downloaded immediately as soon as I post it. And you can rate and comment on the show there, and that helps us out. What also helps us out, too, is if you like our Facebook page. Because when I post a new show, if you share that with your friends, because I, I, I will appear in your news feed. If if Mark Zuckerberg allows me to appear in your news feed Lately I'm really hating on the news feed Because it's showing me the, uh, It's a popularity contest Facebook's news feed I always try and switch it over to top uh, Not top stories But most recent And most of you don't even know that there is that choice And you can't go into settings to lock it into most recent because I'd rather see most recent to see what whatever anybody's posting. That's how it used to be on Facebook. It used to be whoever, you know, you just saw things as they appeared. But now you get in your news feed whatever has the most likes or the most comments and it creates a snowball effect. So somebody that gets a lot of comments will then appear in your news feed and then you will see that and you will like that as well and that thing end up, ends up becoming this huge major liked thing that annoys me to no end what was i talking about oh yeah so like it and share your uh my uh show with your friends and it'll help the spread the word of the show another great way to support the show is buying something on the amazon deal of the day that we have a window to at mikesdailypodcast.com there are also links to where to find us on twitter youtube yelp soundcloud spreaker stitcher and Mixcloud. We're also on Tumblr, too. And there is the Mike's Daily Podcast blog and the Daily Podcast picture. All there at mikesdailypodcast.com and all the interviews I have ever done on the show. You can find there and listen to them as well at mikesdailypodcast.com. Into an interview. Okay. Okay, let's do part two. Here we go. You ready? Ready. You all set? You're all braced? I'm all ready. <laughs> we got Leanne Kelly from the band New Spell. She and I just wrote a song. Well, we wrote the chorus. Because uh, I, I was telling her how I, I moved from Alameda. Wait, whoops. Alabama to Alameda County. <laughs> so it was like, we moved from, I moved from Alabama to Alameda. And something, something. And you said... Can't wait to see ya. <laughs> So there we go. We got a little bit of a chorus for a country song. If you would like there to, con- we go. if you would like to contribute to this song, email me Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail dot com, and we'll finish this damn song because it's been in my head for like three years now, four years. And Leanne and I were both talking about how we are former SoCalians and now we're NorCalians, and we moved here about the same time, about five years ago. So. We have uh, a lot in common. Do you hate it as much as I do when people call it Cali? You know, it's it's not my... I guess it's not my favorite term, but, you know, everybody's... everybody's I remember when I moved up to the Bay Area, I called San Francisco San Fran until somebody <laughs> was like, well, well, you can't... You can't call it San Fran. And I was like, why not? It's... San Francisco, you know, say it again and again, kind of gets long. So San Fran, I don't know. Yeah. So, or it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite term, but you know, to each his own. <laughs> right. I, I just think of that. Uh, what's his name? LL Cool J song. Going back to Cali, Cali. Oh, I don't see, think that. So. That sounds good to me. That works. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, someone else wrote that, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I I think I prefer just calling it California and San Francisco. I've heard a lot of people shorten it to SF, you know, if they're yeah. just sort of rushing through and they say SF. But you play the keyboard for the band New Spell and you sing. And I noticed yeah. you play a Nord keyboard. I do. I played an, I play a Nord Electro. And I notice a lot of Nords 
in uh, live shows wherever I go, and I see that red keyboard everywhere. Everybody mm-hmm. seems to have the red. Why do you think people love that so much? Well, for me, it's um, the sounds are very good. It has a lot of really good keyboard sounds. So the you know electric piano sounds, the um, the organ sounds and the piano sounds are are really nice. Mm. And on top of it, the it has built in effect, you know, like reverb or delay, not delay, um, like tremolo, distortion, uh, stuff like that. That um, and gain EQ, all that stuff. That's very easy to navigate. Oh, okay. You can you know you turn knobs and and get the sound that you want. You don't have to like enter into this oh, computer yeah. program to figure it out. I yeah. yeah. So that's always annoying. That's why I use it. Um, but on the recordings, actually, we used real the real thing. Oh, real organs and pianos. Uh, not no organs, but we used um, a Wurlitzer and a Rhodes and oh. a real piano. So. Nice. Yeah. Do you enjoy playing those instruments? It, yes. Yes. <laughs> now I wanna I wanna buy a whole bunch of vintage keyboards. Oh wow! <laughs> but um, but also the Nord the the Nord that I have, um, it's a little bit. It's not a full size keyboard. Oh. Um, so it's a little bit lighter, and that's really important. I used to have a huge uh, Korg Triton. Oh. Fully weighted 88 keys and it was like a beast. You had to have this huge case to roll it around in and it was just it was a headache. So yeah. um, you know the the Nord Electro is a little bit easier to transport too. How long have you been seeing the Nords out there? Because it, it seems to me I've only been seeing them lately but I guess that they've been around a while. They've been used quite a bit. Yeah. Let's see, when's the first time that I saw a Nord? I remember it was back at uh, in college, maybe like 2003 or four is when I first started oh. seeing some of my jazz my jazz keyboardist friends um, using them, and then they just became more and more popular. Do you want want to someday do a jazz album? <laughs> um. You know, I haven't even thought about that. We'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see in the future if I get that urge. I don't have that urge right now. But your jazz friends, are they still playing jazz? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have um, I have a lot of friends who are doing very, very well in the jazz world. Really? Very, very happy for them. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Are they are they people that like you can say hey I knew that person when and they'll oh yeah oh yeah um, Gerald Clayton is one of my good friends and he's he tours all over the world my friend Natalie John is in uh, South Korea right now she's setting up a, I think like a European tour so yeah everybody's everybody's doing really well and your bass player makes robots. <laughs> Um, Switching gears. <laughs> yes, uh, he's interested in robotics. Interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't know how far into uh, a fully fledged robot he's gotten, but he is definitely interested in that. Wow, Chris, he's a mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you ever want to like bring a big keyboard on stage, maybe he can, uh, you know, a heavy keyboard. He can make a robot that will move that for you. Oh, that would be fantastic! That would be fantastic. <laughs> what are some of your favorite keyboard infused bands? The uh, keyboard songwriters that I've really been liking lately is Patrick Watson. <laughs> um, he's a singer songwriter, and he just. He plays piano primarily, but he's a he's a beautiful got a beautiful voice and uh, just a very talented songwriter. He used to come through San Francisco a lot, so there's one. I'll have to check him out. Keyboardist singer songwriter that I am really into. And I noticed 
on your website the pictures of the band and you've got the pictures of the trees and it looks very San Francisco. Yes. Who took those? And is it, that is San Francisco, is it not? Yes, it is San Francisco. And um, we had our friend Ed Ng take the pictures. Uh, we wanted, since we were recording at, we recorded at Tiny Telephone, which is a San Francisco-based um, analog recording facility. And we... You know, we all met in San, or we didn't meet in San Francisco, but the band came together in San Francisco, and we do a lot of our shows in San Francisco. And um, so we wanted uh, photos that reflected that. So we had him take pictures of us. We just pranced around uh, Golden Gate Park for a morning and took some pictures. Ah, uh, that that is Golden Gate Park. I thought so. <laughs> well, those are awesome photos. And yeah, and we also um, we wanted to get the fog in there too because the fog it just gives such a nice a nice feel and, and a richness to to everything. Um, I don't know if you're a follower of Carl the Fog. Oh, online. that's a <laughs> or if you've if you've heard of Carl the Fog, but we wanted to make sure that he was a part of our picture. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a Twitter account? It's a Twitter, it's a Facebook, it's a, a Instagram. I'm a fan of his. <laughs> Why is it Carl and not like Pete or or Phineas? Phineas Fogg. Phineas the Fog. That yeah. Phineas Fogg you know, around the world in eighty days. I don't know. I guess it was probably whoever created it. Maybe his name was Carl. I see. Okay. <laughs> Um, no, Carl just kind of sounds like a foggy sort of name. Well, Oakland doesn't have as much fog. What does Oakland have? Oakland has the sun, sun and the food truck. <laughs> the, <laughs> the food truck, yeah. Freddie the food truck. Oh, we have... We <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and the other... Uh, there's some microbreweries and the lake, Lake Merritt. Yep. Louis the Lake. <laughs> all these, it's like becoming a Disney cartoon with all the characters. Oh, yeah. Leanne Kelly, let's play a song from Songs We Wrote for Thee, and it's called Wolf and Dove. Who is this written for, since it's a, another song off songs you wrote for someone? Well, this song is it was actually inspired by... Um, some uh, family members of of Jake's, so Jake's nephew and niece, whose names mean youthful wolf and beloved dove, and um, we just kind of we wanted to create a sort of like fable like story, and uh, the lyrics tell a story about the unlikely friendship between a wolf and a dove, and. <laughs> That's pretty much the premise behind the song. Neat. Now, the production of the song is pretty interesting. What? How did this come about? The producing um, and recording. Well, we this song actually we had so 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 many renditions of it before we finally settled on you know a groove and a song structure and chord structure and everything. Um, so when once we finally you know got the song down, then all of a sudden we had this amazing chorus, and I just kept on adding layers upon layers, and then Jake and I added a bunch of claps, and it just became this really epic hmm. chorus at the end of it. So um, so yeah, it was definitely a very collaborative uh, process to the songwriting as well as the uh, recording and the EP. Uh, songs we wrote for thee was mixed to analog tape. That is correct. Why? <laughs> um, we first of all we we'd heard a lot about Tiny Telephone, and um, we were interested in in checking it out and trying a different process than we than we had before. Mm-hmm. Um, what we ended up 
finding is that the sounds were so rich and so full and just just really real sounding and we really really liked that mm. that aesthetic it felt very um, very honest to uh-huh. what we sound like so um, and also there is a little bit of you know we had to be really well prepared because once you mix it down to tape it's like not so easy to go back and and make tweaks or changes oh, afterwards yeah. so um, so it was definitely a different process than what we've done before. It was it was different not to have, you know, a computer at our beck and call at every step of the way. Oh, that didn't work. Let's go back and fix that. Try that. Move that around. Cut and paste here. Do all that. So it was definitely a different a different experience. Yeah, it's so fun to listen to the you know the classic rock artists discussing making you know the really big produced albums like brian may talking about making the um uh uh, uh, bohemian rhapsody thank you and yeah he you know just like they had to record so much stuff so much tape and then like mix it all down to another tape track so that they would have room to put even more stuff on it and oh just insane and then you're dealing with a physical property tape that will uh, eventually wear out you know and Mm -hmm. oh it's just amazing what they did yeah yeah it's it was it was definitely definitely a very a very different process and and um but i'm i'm really happy that we that we did that because it was very um kind of educational too it's like wow here's all this all this old equipment that that people don't use very much anymore and it just felt really cool (laughs) well it's called wolf and dove is the name of the song from the ep songs we wrote for thee and the group is new spell and leanne kelly is the one who is singing and playing the keys on this on drums is jacob frausch e i did the german pronunciation (laughs) <laughs> I, I don't know maybe that what uh, yeah fr- so it's frouchy and, yeah. and the bass player is chris michaelides that is correct and he's also going to build the uh robot that will eventually replace mike's daily podcast it'll be <laughs> it'll be a robot named mike 2000 no that would be an old mike It'd be Mike 3000, wouldn't it? Because it'd be an off in the future. A futurist. There you go. Futuristic Mike. Okay, anyway, here they all are. <laughs> the group New Spell. And it's a Wolf and Dove on Mike's Daily Podcast. Thanks for being on the show, Leanne. Thank you for having me. The young wolf climbed around See what he could see There at the top A little dove She did not buy So the sun set The animal silhouette The animal silhouette
That's New Spell. As we go outside the last place on earth where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, California. And that is the song Wolf and Dove. Moose and Squirrel. No, that's not the name of it. Wolf and Dove. From the EP to be released June 7th at Amnesia in San Francisco. That is the EP Songs We Wrote for Thee from New Spell. Thank you so much to Leanne Kelly for being on the show. She's terrific. And here's today's podcast picture. The picture is a drawing with myself and the wonderful Benita the Rodeo Queen. Yeah, Ma, we were talking about how your dog, Basil the Boxer, can pee wherever he likes. Yeah, he can pee anywhere. It's crazy. And then, you know, as human beings, we got to find a, a restroom. And sometimes you're in a part of, let's say, San Francisco, where there is no place to go unless you pay for a $10 dinner in a restaurant. They will let you use their restroom. Oh, but Mike, can't you use, like, a, a Starbucks and maybe just buy a, a, a $1.50 coffee? Yeah. And their bathrooms are horrible because everybody else is doing that. So, yeah, it can be a conundrum, but Basil the Boxer doesn't have as big a problem, although he's having a problem with, uh, you know, relieving himself on a fire hydrant in today's drawing. So check that drawing out now at mikesdailypodcast.com. And, uh, Benita, are you going to replace Chelsea Handler? Yeah, Mike, when she leaves, e like, explanation point. I'm going to replace her because I'm really cool and funny and beautiful just like Chelsea. Wonderful. That's going to be great. I can't wait to see that. Madam Rutabaga, are you going to watch that show? Yes, Michael Masu. That is going to be wonderful. Let's hear it for woman power. Isn't that right, Benita? Yeah, Madam Rutabaga. You're absolutely right. Woman power. That's what I said. Woman power. That's right, Mike. What? Mike, I, I was just saying woman power. Yeah. Let's hear it for woman power. Okay. We just did say something about woman power. Why do I all of a sudden feel like we're going to have the band uh, um, Two Becomes One? Who is that band? You know, the one with the women. The Spice Girls. That's what I was talking about. I feel like they're going to walk out here on the uh, patio of the last place on earth outside here any moment. Or maybe I'm just dreaming. Still got a thing for all those lovely British women. And why not? Right? Let's hear it for Canada. What? Wrong country? Oh. Tomorrow, it's the return of the much-loved feature, the Micropedia and Seneca, where we'll have some cool and interesting travel news. Just in time for your summer vacation plans. Plus, we'll hear from Shelley Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, and John Deere the Engineer. Mike's TV Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikestvpodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Seriously, where is your accent from, Valentino and Bison Bentley? Mike. 
we're going to kill you if we tell you that. Yeah, you don't want to know that. Do you know that? <laughs> <laughs>